one of the themes that I've sort of observed in, in the work is this idea of characters who are sort of living on the, the surface of worlds that end up being much deeper um, than they are. Is that is that a conscious thing? That, that, is that a, like a personal thing that you're working through? Or is it... <laughs> Um, or is it just a thing that you've uncovered? Well, you know, it's funny. Thing, I think you're working through. Uh, I, we were talking before. For all of you fine folks walked in, uh, there there have been a couple of people who've written, you know, master's thesis theses uh, about about the games that I've worked on, which freaks me out, by the way. Um, and one of them sent me a copy, and and uh, it just it was it basically dawned on me that my entire career has been one long therapy session. <laughs> you know? uh, no, it's like this, this guy pointed out a couple of things that I do know. Every game, that, or almost every game I've worked on has uh, an alternate reality. It has you know, a cyberspace or, uh, I'm, I'm sorry Disney, but the, all, you know, when you eat the mushrooms in Underworld, fun things happen. You know? <laughs> um, and at every game, there's a dream state in Wings of Glory, a game that no one remembers. But uh, anyway, every game has a dream state or an alternate reality, which which I, I, I knew that. that. That I've done very consciously. Um, and every game has a basketball court where you can actually shoot a basket. Um, see, if, see if you can find them all. Collect them all. <laughs> um, and I make my teams put the basketball court in. I always tell them, don't tell me where it is, though, because I want the fun. Hey, I want the fun of finding it, too. Um, and uh, and I've, 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 I found one in, in Disney Epic Mickey 2, but I've been told there are others now, so I have to, I have to find the secrets too. Um, that's the only Easter egg in, in the game, by the way, all you Disney folks are. <laughs> um, sorry, I promise I'll stop pointing at you soon. Um, no, but, but the other thing he pointed out was uh, that every game I've worked on is, is built around a dysfunctional family. And, and I have no idea where that comes from because I had a very happy childhood and loving parents and everything. But apparently I have a problem with families uh, that I, I am working through through, through my work. Um, but that, uh, that was a long non-answer to your question. Uh, the, <laughs> the, okay. the, actual, the actual answer, no, the, I, I, I'm a huge believer in the idea that games can, can be as compelling uh, as, as any medium in terms of our ability to tell stories. Uh, we tell them differently, and we tell different kinds of stories, and, and I'm happy to talk about that if you want. But um, I, I think a story can't just be save the world from alien invasion. It, it can't just be you know rescue the princess. If you do that, yeah, I mean, there's no point. It just, it's stupid. Uh, so I, I think a game story, like any other, other uh, medium's stories, has to have subtext, it has to have a theme, it has to have something you're exploring that you you kind of hope no one ever notices consciously, but it's there, and by the when they get done, they realize, uh, that was, wait, that was, there was something going on there. I learned something. That, that was interesting. I don't even know why, you know, especially when you're making games now that, that are as, as appealing to nine-year-olds as they are to, to 90-year-olds. Um, you, you want players to come away learning something about themselves and about the world, and so I think it's important that there be this underlying thematic material and worlds that are deeper than they appear to be, and you know that you discover that depth. Yeah, I do absolutely. I do that on purpose. And is it something that the same for you as a creator? Are you uncovering things about yourself as you make these games as well, and sort of interact with your teams and your players? Yeah, I learn how inadequate I am on every game <laughs> I work on. It's unbelievable. I mean, no, seriously. I, I, one of the one of the critical things for me is, is um, I, I I'm bored very easily, <laughs> uh, and so I I always have to make sure that that there's at least one thing I just have no idea how to do in every game I work on. There's got to be one thing that, that no one in the world's ever seen before. Uh, and it's because I need that, uh, that possibility of failure. I mean, it's not just me. I actually think that, I think teams need that. Mm. Uh, I, I, I will leave it to others to execute well against well-understood problems. I just, that's, that, what, what could possibly be more boring than that, you know? Um, and so uh, making a game is, 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 is constantly learning about yourself. Uh, you know, when I started, it was, it was me and a, and a keyboard and a screen. You know, that was it. And then when I started working at Origin, uh, uh, you know, they were, we, the first team I worked on was like, I think it was 10 people, you know. And, and then, uh, I, you know, I grew to make games that had 50 people and then 150. I mean, just, just learning how to, how to communicate a, a coherent message to that many people and have them work together to create something coherent for, for the people who are going to experience that in the real world. I mean, that's, that's the, the big lesson i mean how do you how do you how, how do you how are you creative in a group context right that's that's i think the big thing hmm. uh, for me anyway 
And and you're still solving those problems, I assume, because the oh, teams are yeah, just going to keep getting no. bigger. Oh my god! I mean, if, it, it, I I always say, I mean, it's not just me. You know, you, you're you're going to make new mistakes on every game, right? I mean, you you try not to make the ones you made last time. Um, and and but nobody asked me about the camera in Disney Epic Mickey. Okay. So tell us about uh, the camera in Epic Mickey. Uh, <laughs> No, you you want to make new mistakes with with every game, and and that's that's the thing. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's people are so afraid of failure. I mean, even people on my team, I, I constantly have to remind everybody, you know, what's the cost of failure when you're a game developer? Okay, now I mean, I, I don't want to be too flip about this because there are people with mortgages and families and you know jobs are on the line. But at the end of the day, we're not curing cancer here. You know, we're providing entertainment and maybe some some enlightenment for people, but. If, so you fail. Oh my gosh! I lost a multi-billion-dollar company some money. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I might be the one that says it's okay, Disney, for that one. <laughs> well, but I mean, look, when I was an independent, you know, I I was it, uh, the the thing that when I when I left Ion Storm uh, and IDOS I, to to do Junction Point as an independent startup. It was it was pretty funny. I left with the the idea. I had a very specific thing I wanted to do, and it was going to change the world, and it was going to be amazing. And about three weeks after I I started Junction Point, I realized. I mean, I had already fallen into how do I make the mortgage next month? How do I make the rent? How do I make payroll? Oh my God! I've just got to survive. I got to survive. I got to survive. Um, you know. But even there, the the cost of failure was okay. I'll go get a job. You know. Oh, I'll open a bookstore or something. Or whatever. <laughs> Like a proper job. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 I'm sure everybody in this room, if, if, if you're here, you've probably read at least one interview with me, which means you've heard me say, fail gloriously, right? I mean, y y your entire life. I mean, I, I'm, I'm probably the oldest person still making games, right? And uh, at the end of the day, I've, I've now, I'm working on, I, 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 I promised myself I was going to count so I could give an actual answer. It's either 22 or 23 games that I've worked on now. So in 30 years, I've made... 22, let's call it 23 things, give myself the benefit of the doubt. An entire life summed up in 20 something things. Let's call it 30 things by the time I, I shuffle off this mortal coil. Damn, they better all have a chance of being great. I would rather fail at something that's really cool. You know, it's not like I'm, I'm building widgets every day. Uh, my life is my work and, and I've, got, I've got 30 chances to get it right.